In the previous lesson, I taught you how to create a model associated with a row from our database and fetch it to populate those attributes. But now in this lesson, we're gonna take a look at how we could update a row. So let's try this again. Var task equals new app.models.task. And this time we're going to set the ID equal to three. Now if I run task.fetch and we run task.toJSON, we've now fetched the row from our database that has an ID of three. Well, we know to interact with a model, if we wanted to update, for example, title, we could say task.setTitle equal to get ready for work. Now if I save that and I run task.toJSON again, and we open up our object, yep, we have updated our model, but Backbone isn't completely magical, meaning if I come back and I try to reload this, no, it's not going to update it. So simply setting an attribute is not going to trigger an AJAX request. What we need to do is tell Backbone, yes, we're done making these changes. I want you to save these to the database. We do that by running task.save. Now this won't quite work yet, but if I run it, we can go to the network tab and I can take a look at the most recent request. What we can see here is the request URL was the name of our collection or our resource, and then the name of the ID, and it's making a put request. So if you're familiar with the idea of REST, when we make a put request or sort of like an update request to a collection and then the name of the ID, that translates to here's some data, and I want you to update the task that has an ID of three. Now at any given time, how do we know what's actually being sent through? Well, if I scroll down, you'll see this area called request payload. This is what Backbone is going to send through to our server. It's simply json.stringifying our model and sending that through. So let's return to our Laravel project and see how we can receive that. Well, when a put request is made, we wanna trigger the update method. Now we know that it accepts the ID, but how can we fetch the input? Well, I can do this, input equals input JSON. And now what that is going to do is it's going to take that and turn it into something that I can actually work with in PHP. So now, for example, if I return input and maybe we wanna return the title, I can do it like that. If we try this again and we say, create a new task, we're going to fetch it, then we're going to set a new one and we're going to try to save it. Now, if I go back to the network tab, you'll see that yes, we did everything as we would expect and what we got in return was the value of that title. So it simply decodes that JSON so that I can work with it. Well, now that we have the input, all we have to do is fetch the item from the table, task equals task find by ID. And by the way, I'm not gonna do much validation here. I really wanna keep this simple so that we can focus as much as we can on the backbone side. But now I can say task and I will set the title equal to input title. What else do we need? Let's return to the payload. We have the title, the completed status. So let's do that as well. Task completed equals input completed. Now that we've attached the new rows, we're gonna call Laravel's version of the save method and we should be good to go. So let's try this one more time. Task.save and whoops, it looks like we have some kind of error. So let's debug that together. I'm gonna go to the network tab and I'm gonna take a look at the preview and it looks like, oh, there's some PHP error. Unknown column updated at. All right, so what it's doing is it's automatically trying to set the timestamps, but I haven't specified those here because I don't really care in this case. So I'm gonna go to my model and say public timestamps. I don't want it to worry about setting those. All right, let's try this again. I'm gonna go to the network tab and clear all of it so that we can start from scratch. And then I'm gonna try to save it again. Now, if I go to the network and we check it out, we did go to that URL, we sent a put request, we sent through the payload. So now if we did everything right and I reload this, you can see that we have updated the title to get ready for work. Let's do one more just to get in the habit of how we can work with this. Var task equals a new app.models.task. And this time we're going to update go to the store to go to the grocery store. ID is one task.set title to go to the grocery store. And now I'm going to save it, and that's going to send a put request to task slash one. Let's make sure. Yep, it sends a put request to task slash one, 
In the payload, it stringifies our model attributes. Then from our server side, we get that input. We then fetch that row from the table, update its values, and save it. Let's return to SQL Pro just to make sure it worked. And sure enough, we did get go to the grocery store. So good, we're making a lot of progress here. This is turning out to be a lot easier than you might have thought. We've learned how to read data and update data. But in the next video, we're going to move on to the next one, of course, which is how to delete or destroy a row.